Viewer discretion is advised. For those of you who like to get a little bit experimenty and tinker when you're shooting film, I know I fall into that category. Uh, this video is just for you. I'll go ahead and create chapters you know, for the video in case there's something you want to come back to, but I would recommend if you're interested in trying this technique, uh, just watch the video once through, at least for you know the first time, just to get all the information because there is a bunch to it. So before we get started, let's check out some images of what it looks like shooting both sides. As you can see, it's a pretty wild look, and the the colors and the tonality that you're going to get out of it definitely depend on what ISO you're shooting each side. One thing to keep in mind before you get started is whether or not you want the frames from the front and the back side to line up. If you do, you're going to want to go with like a mechanical SLR, something that you're going to load the film into yourself as opposed to our automatic point and shoot that you just pop a, a roll in and then it automatically feeds and automatically advances. If you want your stuff to line up, uh, stick with an older style manual SLR. So I'll go ahead and I'll load the camera for the first side and this is just like you would load it any other time. The only thing that we have to do different is we're going to have to mark the shutter window so we know exactly where to line up uh, the second time. So what I do is I just look at the edges of the shutter window and then I'll take a marker and then I just put some little dots there. So this way I know for the future that when I put the film in, I can easily see where the marks are. Give that a crank. Okay, so my marks are here and here. So I just go ahead and I do that. And then I draw that. And then I put an X. That is my shutter window there. So now we have the shutter window marked. It's advanced a couple frames. We have to change the, the ISO. So when we're shooting multiple exposures and when I'm shooting the front side of the film, I'm going to drop it back one stop. So since this is a 400 speed film, I'm going to move the ISO back to 800, which is going to reduce the exposure by one stop. Okay. And what I like to do at this point is um, I like to write myself a note. I'm going to pop this in the back here. Okay, so you are ready to shoot this first side. Everything is marked, ready to go. Uh, just keep in mind too, when, when you're done shooting the roll, don't rewind everything all the way back in. Uh, you want to leave the, the leader out just a little bit because it'll make it easier for us uh, next time we go because we have to still pull this out and, and flip it around. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll shoot the front side and be right back. Now, the next thing is to, to flip the film over, um, and to do that, we're going to need to be in complete darkness. And what I do is I have a, a little platform set up in my closet uh, that makes it really easy. So let me show you guys what I do. Um, so let's check that out real quick. All righty. Welcome to my closet. I want to show you my retirement fund right there. Pure gold right here. When I'm 60, okay, the way prices are going, I'm sure I'm getting rich as we speak. All right, anyway, so the setup. This is what I do is I basically set myself out um, everything that I'm going to need. So whenever I turn the light off, you know, obviously I can see nothing, right? But I can fumble around very easily like this in the dark and grab everything I need. When it comes to taping the negatives together, I've already taken a couple pieces of uh, scotch tape and I, I just basically I put them on the edge here. So I can, in the dark, I can just, you know, pop them right off the edge. I don't have to fumble with the actual, uh, you know, tape dispenser. They're already cut, ready to go. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this because uh, this just this saves so much hassle. And I'm all about saving hassle, so...
Okay, so I'll show you guys how to flip this over. Uh, so from this point on, everything is going to be in the dark. Um, I obviously have to show you in the light, um, so this is just a test roll. But from this point on, you're now in the dark. So you're going to want to pull the film all the way out, okay? And I would say about an inch or two away, um, you know, make sure that you have enough to, to grab back onto, okay, um, that you're... You have an inch or so and try to make it again this is in the dark so good luck uh, but make a cut as even as you can okay and you would have already had your pieces of tape make to you know make it real super easy your pieces of tape are going to be on the edge of the whatever so you just grab a piece of tape okay and we're going to flip this completely over okay line it up like this put a piece of tape on there now this is it's it's kind of tricky when you're doing this all by feel in the dark um, it might be cool to practice on a, a test roll or something but you know what's important is when you're doing this that it's straight okay because you, you don't want it to be kind of cocked like up or down it's kind of important because when you go to roll this back in uh, it's gonna it's it'll bind up how do I know because I've done it we're still in the dark. We're just going to go ahead and roll this back in. Okay, great. And at this point, you can take the canister back into the light and we can load the camera. Okay, so now the leader is upside down. I pull it out a little bit past the X, okay, because I... This is how you know that the, the frame's gonna line up perfectly. Make a nice cut, straight and even. Then flip your leader back over to the correct way. Reconnect your film. When we get this set, that X is gonna be perfectly aligned in our shutter window, just like that. It might take a little bit of uh, finagling this way and that, but it should uh, line up perfectly that way. Okay. Everything's lined up, so now we need to adjust the ISO. So we're shooting the back side of the film, which means we're red scaling, so we're going to need to add one to two stops. And because I'm sure I'll forget, I'm going to go ahead and right here, side two, 100. And then I'm good to go. So I take this and... I shoot the second side and then I can rewind it and develop it as normal. Now I just want to mention that the ISO settings that I've chosen uh, decreasing by one stop on the front side and increasing by two stops on the back side, uh, it, there's nothing to say that that's the right setting. Okay, you know, that's what I've found provides the most even exposure between the two sides, um, you know, even minus one on the front, plus one on the back, uh, that gives a really good exposure as well. Um, and it's, the, the, you know, that's about what I like. Um, but that's not to say that it's the right way. You know, there's a whole lot of different combinations you can try, you know, under and over exposing both the front and the back, and each will give you, you know, varying results. So, you know, I would totally say, you know, try out a bunch of different rolls with a bunch of different ISO combinations to see what you like. I also want to mention that there's an easier way if you don't care about lining up the shutter on the front and the back. Uh, there's it just it, it's a little bit quicker, just a little bit easier, but you can use an empty roll uh, to catch the full roll and flip it around like you would uh, if you're just red scaling. So I'll show you that here. So we have two rolls. We have an empty roll and we have the front roll that you've shot the front side with. Okay, so basically you're just going to if they were in the same direction, okay, you're just going to flip one of the rolls over. There'll be a little bit of tape on the edge, okay, like that. Then you take this into the dark, so your closet, your changing bag, whatever. We're in the dark now. Then you're going to roll this into the empty container. And then when you're done, cut this. Put a new leader on it and you know then pop that into your 
uh, into your camera. So that's honestly, that's a little bit easier. Uh, but again, I like to go through, it, it's a little bit more trouble, but I like everything to line up. So, uh, but that is an easier way if, if you want to choose to do that. And I want to share something with you guys that works really well with multiple exposures when you're trying to emphasize a certain part of the frame or you want to have more separation between the front side colors and the back side colors. Uh, you can use a multiple exposure technique called flagging. And basically flagging is just blocking off a part of the frame on the first shot so that you can expose uh, the, that frame again easier with more separation the second time. So to give you an example of, of what I'm talking about, uh, you can kind of see that right now, imagine we're taking our first shot. Everything that's in this circle, okay, is going to get exposed to the film. Everything that's not in the circle will not be exposed. So this way, it's going to be more prominent on the second shot. And uh, to do this, I, I love these cards that get ejected from uh, Polaroid film. They're perfect, but, you know, any kind of uh, card, construction paper, preferably black, works well. For anybody who's using a point and shoot that automatically chooses the ISO for you, uh, so basically it, it uses the DX coding system, I do have a video on how to hack the DX code, uh, and that'll allow you to trick the camera into under or overexposing, which could be helpful if you're shooting both sides. So if you guys made it to the end, wow! smash that like button. Um, I hope everybody's well, and until the next video, we'll see you.